Um, one question we get is, who exactly is Western Pacific Timber? Well, we're a privately held timber company that was established in 1993. We own and manage about 150,000 acres between Washington and Idaho. Um, the bulk of our land is in two major blocks. One is the upper Lockstaw properties, which we'll talk more in depth about. And then we also have about a 100,000 acre block in south central Washington near Holdendale. And then the remainder of that is scattered parcels throughout Washington State. We actively manage our land in Washington like, um, for timber production, and the majority of it is leased to local ranchers for grazing. We have a small staff of foresters that manage our property, including myself, and we use local contractors to lock our harvest units and local truckers to uh, haul our wood to the area mills and log yards. In our 17 years of business, we've maintained a clean environmental track record. In Washington, we follow the strict forest practice laws that are second only in restrictiveness to California's. And in Idaho, management is done to best management practices, which are part of the Idaho Forest Practices Act. <coughs> we do allow recreation on our properties. Our Goldendale Block, um, we participate in the Fish and Wildlife Feel Free to Hunt program, which is a cooperative agreement that secures public access. And this year, we also participate in the Disabled Hunter program. <clears throat> so as part of our business model, um, we do winter exchanges. Uh, we acquire timberlands that are more suited for public ownership, and we pursue beneficial exchanges. Um, one exchange we did in 2008 uh, was with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. We exchanged 82,000 acres of our property for about 21,000 acres of Washington State timberlands. This allowed the DNR to block up three areas in central Washington. They create, then also create a new state forest. In all, they blocked up 175,000 acres, and 129 square miles of habitat were protected in perpetuity. <coughs> so, quick little overview. We've heard a lot, um, kind of a repeat. Uh, we have we acquired 40,000 acres in 2005 from Plum Creek Timberlands and it is in a checkerboard ownership um, pattern, and ranges from Lolo Pass, the Idaho-Montana border, to the Powell Ranger Station. And in 2006, we started discussions with Forest Service in doing an exchange. <coughs> Some of the benefits of the land exchange are obvious. Um, it's a net gain in public land. Uh, it allows the Forest Service to block up their ownership in the upper Lockstaw. And as Teresa mentioned, it creates efficiencies in their management and reduces management costs and allows them to implement watershed-wide um, restoration plans. We feel it also creates job opportunities. We hire local contractors and local um, truckers to haul our wood to, to area mills, and then that money again is spent <coughs> over and over within the community. <coughs> In terms of county revenue, um, in the EIS, you'll, if you've taken a look at it, it's a pretty hefty document. Um, it showed that there was very little change, there would be very little change to county revenues, about 0.1% total when you take into effect um, the PILT funds and property taxes. Public access will, be, um, will continue. Uh, all the properties we got in the Washington Exchange um, we maintain the exact same public access that there was when they were in DNR ownership. So as Teresa went over, I, I won't go through all this, but there's the, the five different options, the no action, the value for value, um, <coughs> which is about 17,000 acres, and the combination of uh, purchase and land trade, and then the also outright purchase. So a little bit closer look at our Lockstaw properties. Um, they are a managed forest. Um, millions of board feet have been moved off these properties to feed mills in both Idaho and Montana. The, it's, it creates a mosaic of stands. There's thriving plantations, which um, have appropriate species, such as Douglas fir, lodgepole pine, western larch, ponderosa pine, western white pine, etc. There are selective cuts with commercial fins and shelter wood cuts. And since we got the property, we actually haven't done any harvesting. Um, all prior uh, management was done by Plum Creek. 
and they follow best management practices, which are put in place to protect water quality and maintain forest productivity. <coughs> These properties also have the headwaters of the Loxoc, which provides critical habitat for steelhead, spring chinook, various trout species, and bull trout. And as Teresa also pointed out, uh, the Loxaw River is a wild and scenic river designated for recreation. There's also a lot of recreation that goes on on these properties. Um, uh, the Lolo Pass Visitor Center tracks about, it gets at least 80,000 visitors a year, which is just adjacent to our property there. Just over the border, um, here's a map of the, the ownership, the tan being Western Pacific, green being Forest Service. Um, <coughs> Just over the border in Montana, those white parcels are actually part of what was the Montana Legacy Project. This was a historic <laughs> conservation project that allowed for the purchase of 310,000 acres of private ground, which links critical habitat and protects working forests from development. So in alternative C and D, these are the acreages that are still involved. Um, as you can see, a concern probably to all of you here, this is Lake Hunt County number, about 2,600 acres. Um, see, as uh, some, uh, you know, for originally there was the 28,000 that were put on the table with the intent of it probably being around 20,000 acres for the value for value exchange. And parcels that, during the scoping process, parcels that had a lot of environmental concerns, such as the Potlatch River parcels and the American River parcels, those were taken out. And so those no longer exist in this exchange, as well as the roadless area designation uh, parcels in the Elk City area. So this acreage here, sorry, but I'm blocking you up. <laughs> just realized that. Um, this acreage here uh, represents about 78 different individual parcels. So this map I realize is pretty small scale. It's the same maps that you see over here is what, what I'll be going through. This shows you the extent of the entire exchange. You have one parcel all the way down here by Riggins, Elk City, um, parcels up in Bonner County, and everything in between there. And these parcels were identified by the Forest Service for the exchange. We didn't take a map and go, we want that one, that one, that one, that one. These were identified by the Forest Service. Um, and part of their criteria were um, that they were difficult to manage. A lot of these, some of these parcels lack legal access. Um, actually, 40% of the Clearwater County parcels don't have legal access to it. So zooming in a little, um, this map shows the Leyta and Benoit County parcels. They're the red parcels, I guess I should have explained. Um, tan being private, green being forest service, light blue is um, Idaho Department of Lands. So in total in Leyta County, there's about 2,600 acres. And they range in size from 37 acres to 400 acres each. Um, and as you can see, many of them are outlined to the major blocks of Forest Service properties. This, here we zoom out a little to bring in the Clearwater County parcels. Um, there's 35 parcels in Clearwater County, still in the exchange, and totaling about 4,200 acres. And like I said, um, 40% of the Clearwater County ones don't have legal access. So ones like out here that are sort of have private property that you go through to access don't actually have legal access. Here's our the Elk City parcels. As Teresa talked about, some of the American River parcels that were on the north end of the township, those have dropped out. And then some of the on the east, that were part of the roadless designation, those have also dropped out. <coughs> an issue that was brought up um, during some public meetings was, well, these parcels <coughs> are kind of a gateway to this, all this federal property out here. Well, part of the agreement to initiate guarantees that there will be public access through those parcels to the remaining federal land. And here's the Bonner and Kootenai County parcels. Um, Kootenai County just has this one piece, 58 acre parcel and then the scattered ones up in Bonner County, um, eight scattered ones for about 1,100 acres. So what's next? Um, well, for one, the appraisal needs to be done. 
Um, and that's going to be done by a certified appraiser uh, to federal standards for appraisals for federal lands. Both the Western Pacific and federal lands are being appraised by the same company. So it will be, will be a fair appraisal done to standards by a third party. The, as we said, the draft EIS came out about two weeks ago. And there's a 90-day comment period uh, ending February 23rd. Uh, we will have public meetings throughout uh, North Central Idaho in all the areas that are that kind of encompass the exchange area. And then we hope to have a final EIS and record of decision end of 2011. So that's all I have, Alex.